Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Well, I'm 99.9% .9 automated in the hydroponic strawberry high tunnel. So stay tuned and I'll show you what I got accomplished. So I spent the morning raking out the gravel in the front part of the high tunnel. I do have washed river rock, which is not what I wanted, but the gravel yard messed up, so no big deal. I'm working with it. I was able to get all my barrels in place and installed and went ahead and got them filled up with water because I like to fill them up earlier in the day so they heat up so it's much easier to uh, mix up the nutrients because when the water's warm, they dissolve so much better. And last year, we put these little lids, doors on, and makes it so much easier getting the nutrients in. Because before, I used to have a funnel and try to pour them in. I always made a mess. So with these nice big doors, it's a lot easier. So the dosatrons are all installed. The timer is programmed. We've got new batteries, 9-volt batteries in. So I have a program to come on four times a day. And it's coming at 9, 12, 3, and 6 for five minutes at a time. Because right now, the plants are little and it's not so hot. And I'll adjust it as it goes throughout the summer. So the blue lab monitor is on and the pH probe and the EC probe are in place. And I don't have any nutrients in the tanks yet, so this plain water's been going through for the strawberries right now. And I think my pH is at 8.9 and the EC is 0.5. So, you know, once the nutrients go in there, it's gonna make the big difference. But I think my pH probe might be on its last legs. I think it's like two years old and that's usually how long they last. So I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and buy a new one. So I have my tank set up, I have my pH adjust in the first one, and I have it the blue color, so it just makes it easier to remember which one is which. And my tank A and my tank B, I already went ahead and put the acid in because I hate doing that, so that's already taken care of. And I measured out my nutrients for my macro, which are going to go in tank A, and my micro, which are going to go in tank B. So here are the nutrients for the first tank A or tank 1. All my nutrients, I weigh them out separately, and I just put them in one bucket because it's just much easier to carry them out this way. So let me get these guys all into this nice warm water because the sunshine was out earlier today. It got really cloudy and windy. There we go. Got that one all in. And then, so the first bucket I poured in weighed about 15 pounds. And this guy weighs about 12. Get them all poured in. I am going to have to top off the water a little bit. I always want to make sure I leave enough room so I can stir everything up. And I have one other little of the really micronutrients to put in tank B. Get them swished out of there because they like to stick to the bottom of the cup. Yeah. And then in the first tank, tank A, the other thing I need to add is the iron. So let me grab that. And it makes it look such a pretty orange. Pour the iron in. Put it down low because it's a little windy. The same thing. The iron likes to stick to the bottom of the measuring cup, so I go ahead and rinse it out so all the good nutrients go in the barrel. Okay, goes back in there so I can take them into the head house. And I have a stirring stick, so let me go grab my sticks so I can stir up the nutrients. So I always get comments of why I use a, a pipe, because it's round and it doesn't stir them up really good. But it does, it does a good job. So yeah, I can tell that everything's mixing up really well. When I scrape the bottom, if you can hear the granules, then you know you have to keep stirring. But once they get all dissolved, it's all nice and smooth. So I'm going to have to let the dosatrons work for a little bit and suck the nutrients up into the lines and then get into the mixing pot. And by the time they get out to the strawberries, it's a 100-foot run for each of them. So it's going to take a little bit for the nutrients to get out to the baby plants. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Go ahead and close these down to keep all the debris and bugs out. There. Now I think I'll turn on the dosatrons and get it mixing up. So I'm going to manually turn on the valve so the strawberries get watered. Click it over and hear it running. So I want to make sure my EC is at 1.2 and then my pH is 6.0. So you can hear everybody sucking everything up. You hear the dosatrons clicking. Make sure they're all working correctly. Yep, I can, each one of them is clicking. So I'll just keep watching for a little bit and I'll look at my Blue Lab, Blue Lab Guardian and it'll tell me if I'm in the correct range and if I need to adjust my percentages going up into the lines. Okay, it took a couple minutes. I was able to dial each one of the dosatrons into place so I have my pH and my EC at the perfect range for the strawberries. 
One more component of our high tunnel setup, and it's one of the most important things I need because we have so many raccoons and groundhogs that like to get in here, is my electric sensor. This thing works wonders. I have two ribbons I put real close to the ground and it keeps those little guys out and I don't have to worry about them eating all my strawberries. So you guys probably noticed this in the background and wondering what it is. Well, we've gotten a few things from Vivor and their products are really good quality. And I'm super excited about this because this is going to make my life in the high tunnel so much easier and I won't be tripping over stuff anymore. Today we're exploring the Vivor retractable hose reel, model NWS40. And this reel promises to make watering my high tunnel much easier and efficient. The Vivor NSW40 comes with a 100 foot retractable hose perfect for reaching every corner of my high tunnel without any tangles. It features a durable, high quality hose and a sturdy housing unit that protects it from the elements. Let's unbox the reel and set it up. Inside the box, you'll find all the necessary mounting hardware. Just secure it to a wall or a post at a convenient height and you're good to go. It's simple insulation that anyone can handle. Now let's see it in action. The hose extends smoothly and locks at any length you need. When you're done, just give it a gentle tug and it retracts neatly, avoiding any kinks and twists. Plus, the auto rewind system makes storing the hose a breeze. This hose reel isn't just about convenience. It also helps prolong the life of your hose by protecting it from sun damage and wear. It's a great investment for any gardener looking to maintain a tidy and efficient workspace. In summary, the Vivor Retractable Hose Reel, model NWS40, is a fantastic addition to any garden. It keeps your hose organized, extends its lifespan, and makes watering your plants a joy. And I'm going to put a link down below so you guys can check out the Vivor products they have. And if you want to get the discount on this hose reel, you have to check it out for homegrown passion. And I love this hose reel. This is so nice. Just pull it out to where I need it. It's going to keep this nice and neat inside the high tunnel. And it comes with this really cool nozzle. It has all the different patterns. It has angle, showers, fan, cone. So it's going to make watering all my flowers and anything else I have growing in the high tunnel a breeze. Even though this is mounted inside the high tunnel, I'll be able to turn it and pull out the hose and water all my cut flowers. Well, I'm doing a job I wasn't planning on doing today. The forecast says we're going to have a couple days of rain, so I definitely want to get my ground cover out between the greenhouse and the high tunnel before it rains because it's going to turn into mud. And right now it's leveled out really nice. The gravel's all spread, the dirt's all nice and dry, and I'll be able to walk it down, staple it down at the end and come up with all the staples and get it all in place before the rain hits. The ground cover I purchased is 14 feet wide and it's 14 feet between the greenhouse and the high tunnel. And it comes in nice rolls. They're seven feet long because the ground cover is actually folded in half. So you can see here, got the fold and down at the other end is where the crease is. So when I walk it down, I'm gonna make sure the open side is on the one side. So when I wanna open it up, it's nice and easy and will lay nice and flat. Well, you know what? As soon as I start doing this, the wind picks up. It's been calm all day. I was in the high tunnel working on the strawberries, sweating to death, and now it gets windy. So I better hurry up and get this all buttoned down before it blows away on me. So this is what I use to secure the fabric in place. Big staple with a dead blow hammer. So I think what we're going to do is get a load of gravel and put it all along that edge because this is the way the wind comes every time we get a storm and I don't want it to get underneath the fabric. So I'm going to put a staple in at each of the bows going down the high tunnel and on the greenhouse side where each one of the posts are. So once I get the staples all down along the sides, I'm going to go through and put some in the middle. And I think the cows are waiting for me to open the gate to go into another pasture. they got to wait a couple more weeks. Well, I had to stop putting the staples in. It started getting really windy. So when I got a little gravel, so I can put it along the edge. So when the wind picks up and we get thunderstorms, it won't flip everything over. I think I brought a little too much gravel back. I know I'll find a place for it. 
When I went up to get the gravel, I went ahead and grabbed my T-posts. I got them in place here. They're going to be for the trellis system. And I'm going to try to put them in with my homemade fence pounder. But hopefully it'll go through the dirt. And if it's too hard, I may wait till the rains come and make it a little bit easier. Well, it's just starting to drizzle. It took me about two hours. I got this ground cover all laid out and it's all stapled down and buttoned down the edges with the gravel. So in case the wind picks up, I don't have to worry. And doesn't it look really nice? I'm excited about building the melon trellis, but that's going to be for another day to get the T-posts in. And another benefit of having this ground cover in between the greenhouse and the high tunnel, it's going to keep my weeds down because I always had problems with pricker weeds growing up right next to the greenhouse and trying to come in. And I don't like spraying any weed killer, so this is going to alleviate that problem completely. A quick update on the strawberries. Most buckets have two plants in them, but I did have some extra, so I put an extra plant in a few of the buckets and it's still working out really good with the two admitters. They're getting enough water. This guy right here has about six leaves, so he's ready to start producing fruit. All the other guys are still too little, so if I see flowers, I'm going to pinch them off. So overall, everything is going really well. It's been getting a little hot in here, and not today because we do have a cloudy day, but tomorrow is supposed to be sunny again. So I think next week, Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to get this uh, shade cloth out, pop it over the top of the high tunnel, and button it down, and we'll have nice shade and cool temperatures for the strawberry plants. So I think I'm going to end the video here. My strawberry project is completed. I'm looking forward to working on my melon trellises I'm going to put between the high tunnel and the greenhouse and my cut flowers. So I hope you guys stay tuned for those videos. And like always, please leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next video.